Thanks for coming back and joining me with Spanish with Catalina. We are on chapter nine, stay tuned. Prefix and suffixes. What are prefixes and suffixes? Well, they belong to a small group called affixes. They are additions to already existing root words. They are used to change the meaning or create new words. Prefixes and suffixes in English and Spanish are very similar as they both originate from the Latin roots. I'm not going to get into this in great detail because for me, the important thing is that you learn to speak Spanish. Prefixes are at the beginning of a word and suffixes are at the end of a word. We're going to be working with the suffix of ing. In Spanish, there are two forms of ing, ando and iendo. The number one is cantar, to sing. Cantar, to sing. Cantando, singing. Cantando, singing. Sentir, to feel. Sentir, to feel. Sentiendo, feeling. Trabajar, to work. Trabajar, to work. Trabajando, working. Comer, to eat, comer, to eat, comiendo, eating. Caminar, to walk, caminar, to walk, caminando, walking. Volar, to fly, volar, to fly. Volando, flying. Danzar, to dance, Danzar to dance, danzando, dancing. Comprar, to buy, comprar, to buy, comprando, buying. Correr, to run, correr, to run, corriendo, running. Cocinar, to cook, cocinar, to cook. Cocinando, cooking. Cocinando, cooking. Next, we are going to work with ly. When you add the suffix ly to an adjective, it changes the word into an adverb, but does not change the meaning. Spanish is mente, m-e-n-t-e, and miento, m-i-e-n-t-o. Usual, usual, usualmente, usually. Normal, normal, normalmente, normally. Real, real, realmente, really. Agradecer, thankful. Agradecimiento, thankfully. Great. Now we're going to go on to sentences. Sentences are always great. And as we're going on to these sentences, you're going to learn probably some new vocabulary. So don't forget, page 18 has spots for your new vocabulary. Go ahead and use that space all you want. You'll have a space that you will know where your new vocabulary is. It's a great thing to have. Sentences. Oraciones. Número uno. ¿Dónde está José? ¿Dónde está José? Number one. Where is José? Número dos. José está trabajando. José está trabajando. Number two. Joseph is working. Joseph is working. Número tres. Estoy caminando diario para ejercicio. Estoy caminando diario para ejercicio. I am walking daily for exercise. ¿Qué estás cocinando? ¿Qué estás cocinando? What are you cooking? ¿Realmente vas a llegar a mi casa? ¿Realmente vas a llegar a mi casa? Are you really going to come to my house? 
Normalmente llego al trabajo 10 minutos temprano. Normalmente llego al trabajo 10 minutos temprano. All right. Now, that six sentences for you guys. I've left four spaces for you to do four more sentences with the words that we've already used. For prefixes, we are going to begin with two prefixes. One is IN and two, the second one is DES. We will begin with these prefixes even though there are many, many more. So, HACER means to do, HACER to do, DESHACER ANDU, DESHACER ANDU. Capaz, capable, capaz, capable, incapaz, incapable, incapaz, incapable. Cubrir, to cover, cubrir, to cover, descubrir, to find out, descubrir, to find out. Audible, audible, inaudible. In audible, 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 inaudible, inaudible. Now we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to do the seasons, months, and days of the week. Invierno. Invierno. Winter. Primavera. Primavera. Spring. Verano. Verano, summer. Otoño, otoño, autumn. Days of the week. Días de la semana. Días de la semana. Lunes, lunes, Monday. Martes, Tuesday. Miércoles, Wednesday, Jueves, Thursday, Jueves, Thursday, Viernes, Friday, Viernes, Friday, Sábado, Saturday, Sábado, Saturday, Domingo, Sunday, Domingo, Sunday. Very good. I have confidence that you are doing awesome. Now on to the months. Mesis, months. Mesis, months. The first one, enero. Enero, January. Febrero, febrero. Marzo. Marzo, abril, abril, mayo, mayo, junio, junio, julio, julio, agosto, agosto, septiembre, Septiembre, octubre, octubre, noviembre, noviembre, diciembre, diciembre. And those are the 12 months of the years. Y estos son los 12 meses del año. On to chapter 10. All right, well, chapter 10, we start out with, with a dialogue in a restaurant. And my plan was to actually go to a, a authentic Mexican restaurant and order there and do all of this dialoguing there. But seeing as COVID still hasn't opened up, um, being able to sit in a restaurant yet, we're just going to, I will just read this to you as is. Uh, I'm sorry it's not as exciting as I wanted it to be, but in the future, in a, in a more, maybe in a basic Spanish too, I'll be able to do something like that. So, just uh, bear with me here. 
onto the dialogue in a restaurant. Okay, so number one, numero uno. Afitrion. ¿Cuántos van a estar? Esposo. Somos tres. Número tres. Afitrion. A ver. Está bien. Síguenme. Aquí está tu mesa. Tu mesero se llama Joel. Afitrion. Aquí están sus menús. Esposo. Gracias. Mesero Joel. Buenas noches. ¿Ya están listos para ordenar? Esposo. Sí, ya estamos listos. Joel. Qué bien. ¿Quién va a empezar? Mi hijo. El niño. Yo quiero una quesadilla con arroz rojo y un jugo de manzana. Joel. Está bien. ¿Y quién sigue? Esposa, esposa. Yo me gustaría ordenar unos tacos de pollo y unos de bistec y fresca. Mesero, Joel. Está bien. ¿Y usted? Esposo. Yo quiero ordenar unos sopes con bistec y arroz rojo al lado y una coca. So just from hearing the dialogue, maybe you can figure out what these are. If you can't, that's fine. Go ahead and listen to the video and I will give you the translation for each of the new verbs. Afitrion, host. Afitrion, host. Esposo, husband. Esposa, wife. Esposa, wife. Hijo, son. Hijo, son. Hija, daughter, hija, daughter. Mesa, table, silla, chair. Hombre, man, mujer, woman. Again, hombre, man, mujer, woman, or lady. Caballero, gentleman, dama. Again, lady, a woman. Now, the reason I'm telling you those right now is because they go along with what sometimes you're going to see on the bathroom doors, right? So you go into a restaurant, you're going to either say, see hombre, mujer, or dama, caballero. And that way you'll know which is with, if they don't have the actual sign to show the picture uh, of a lady or a man. Now, continuing on. Baño, washroom, baño, washroom, mesero, waiter, mesero, waiter, mesera, waitress, mesera, waitress, comida, food, comida, food, menu, 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 menu. Ordenar, order, ordenar, order. Quiero, I want, quiero, I want. E, and, e, and. Usted, it's the formal way of saying you. Usted. Recibo, the bill or the receipt. Siguen me, follow me, plural, so more than one. Siguen me. Seguir, to follow. Seguir, to follow. Ustedes, you, in plural. Ustedes. Con, with. Con, with. Listo, ready. Listo, ready. Okay, now in the video, you will see us go to a restaurant. Well, that didn't happen. Okay, be 
due to COVID, this won't be happening, like I said, hopefully in the next, uh, next one. But how about this? How about in this space that in your ebook, you write a dialogue that you think would happen at a restaurant when you go there? That would be great. All right. Now, we are now going to go on to the plural suffix. Believe it or not, plural in Spanish is quite similar to that in English. How is that you say? Well, you just add an S to the end of the word like so. Perro, plural is perros. Listo, plural is listos. But in English, we would not say readies or readies. This is one area that it differs between these two languages. Some adjectives are plural. Let us use listos in a sentence to show you what I mean. Ya están listos? Are you ready? But we're talking about more than one person. So listos, if I said to you, ya está listo, that's one person. But if I'm talking about two or more people, it's ya están listos. Ya están listos. Okay? Están is plural for more than one of you. Listos is all is all of you ready or are all of you ready. You cannot say ya están listo. That is incorrect. The noun and the adjective in this sentence must be both plural. So below are some examples of adjectives that must be pluralized when you are talking about more than one person or more than one object. Listos, ready, plural. Contentos, happy, but as a group. Gozosos, joyful, again, more than one. Enojados, angry or mad. Agradecidos, thankful. Relajados, relaxed. Relajados, relaxed. Real is real. Now in this one, we have to add an ES, not just an S. Malos, bad. Malos, bad. Buenos, good. So all of these must be pluralized. If you're talking again about one, not two, or more people or objects or animals. As you continue learning, it will not take a lot to figure out what needs to be pluralized and what does not. Write some sentences below with pluralized adjectives. I've given you five spaces on its own for you to write some sentences. And then I wrote some sentences as well. I will give you those sentences. All right. So, nosotros estamos contentos. Nosotros estamos contentos. We are happy. Ustedes son buenos para jugar el fútbol. Ustedes son buenos para jugar el fútbol. You guys are very good at playing soccer. Ya van a estar listos para regresar a la escuela en el otoño. Ya van a estar listos para regresar a la escuela en el otoño. Are you going to be ready to return to school in the fall or the autumn? Ya ordenaron ustedes? Ya ordenaron ustedes? Have you ordered yet? Los restaurantes mexicanos son muy ricos. Los restaurantes mexicanos son muy ricos. The Mexican restaurants are delicious. At least their food is. All right. I like to do a lot of dialoguing now so that you can get practice talking. And so here we go with a dialogue. Asking where the washroom is very important in a restaurant or even when you're visiting somebody. 
So this one is going to be in a restaurant. En un restaurante. Con permiso. Sí. ¿Con qué te puedo ayudar? ¿Dónde está el baño? ¿El baño? Sí, el baño. El baño se encuentra al lado de la salida o la entrada. Bueno, muchas gracias. Here is a space to write some extra sentences. You can write three dialogues or ten sentences and two dialogues. Go back through the chapters and see what you would like to practice. Remember, practice makes perfect, but not without making mistakes. Espero que ya han aprendido a hablar un poco del español a este punto. Busca diferentes lugares para poder practicar el español. Ejemplos son Superstore o El Mercado. Una tienda latina. Busca en Google para ver si hay una tienda latina en tu área. Un restaurante auténtica mexicana. No son fáciles para encontrar, pero sí lo hay. Una iglesia hispana. Ya desde este punto... Y adelante, las instrucciones van a estar en español y inglés. No te preocupes, los videos van a tener la traducción en inglés. Recuerdas, tú puedes aprender todo lo que quieres aprender. All right, I will translate that now in English. So we'll start again with the beginning where it says, Espero que ya han aprendido. I will start there translating it now into English, okay? So I hope that at this point, you have learned to speak a little bit of Spanish. Look for different places to practice your Spanish. Some examples are, go to Superstore. Listen there for people speaking Spanish or Walmart or co-op, any of the grocery stores really. Listen for people speaking Spanish and ask them in English if they are speaking if they speak Spanish. And if they do, you can ask them if they wouldn't mind or you could start by asking them where they're from in Spanish. Start different ways, start different conversations. If you want to finish this chat this whole book first before you start doing like that, things like that, that's okay. When you feel confident to even do a little bit, practice whatever you can and it'll help. Una tienda latina. So if you find a Latin store, a Latin market in your area, search on Google Maps, whatever town, city you're, you're living in. Uh, towns, normally there's not going to be um, Latin grocery stores or, or restaurants, but you never know. Um, look on Google Maps and it will tell you. So go there, practice, um, your Spanish, an authentic Mex Mexican restaurant. They're not very easy to find, but they do exist. So look it up on Google Maps again. Or a, Spanic, a Hispanic church. Even if you don't regularly go to church, it's a great way to learn Spanish. Or any language. If you're going to another church to learn another language, there are great places to learn a new language. So after this point and on, all the instructions will be both in Spanish and English. Don't worry, in the videos, I will translate everything into English. Now remember, you can learn anything that you want to.